the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, while their enemies looked on. At that very hour, there was a severe earthquake, and a tenth of the city collapsed. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming soon. How soon, you ask? We don't know, but the Philippines was in the grip of earthquake mania the past few months. Just last week, there was a citywide earthquake drill. You heard that right, citywide, Metro Manila and all its glory, all its people, in the middle of a busy workday, took time off for a hashtag shake drill, doing drop, cover, and duck, all these like running, everything, just to be prepared for the big one. So what is the big one? It's the biggest earthquake we will ever have known, according to some scientists. Now, as we all know, earthquakes are not really very, very predictable. If they're not like typhoons, which we could barely predict here in the Philippines, let alone earthquakes. But new, well, we don't, you know, we should just like take uh, these new studies with a grain of salt. But this seems quite valid. Some scientists have said like of the different hundreds of models for predicting earthquakes, one that seems more valid than others suggests that most huge earth earthquakes uh, are preceded by some smaller ones of you know which falls you know f follows a certain criteria because we can't just say any small one comes for a big one because the philippines has like tons of earthquake every year being in the ring of fire but apparently there was an earthquake last year that was big enough to f fall into that criteria plus among some other things that they now feel the big one is coming here very soon when we don't know where they say it all the places following the West Valley Fault somewhere, it's gonna, that places are gonna get hit. But you know how it is in Metro Manila. You don't even have to be at the fault for your house to fall down because nobody really follows building codes, you know. It's all a suggestion. Anyway, guys, just here, I'm gonna do a little video. It's not gonna be the most comprehensive thing on the planet, just little, I mean, you could just like find really comprehensive guides on the internet, packing lists, whatever. Here are just some stuff that I feel like are really important that you really shouldn't miss out on because you know by packing lots of stuff sometimes you really have to prioritize what should you put or maybe you could delegate a sibling or someone else to pack it for you so but what do you want to have on yourself uh, when you go so you have to really think about these things and these are just little guidelines plus you know the kind of things that you pack what whatever your mindset is whether if you're gonna leave it in your car or you're gonna leave it in the home for you to grab uh, in case of an emergency or if it's gonna be a bag that you grab because you feel you will never come home again These things could all be very different. Plus there's also like different things. Remember this the Philippines biggest danger is not earthquake Well, that's one of it because just because not really because of the strength of the earthquakes, but really more of because uh, people here are prone to panicking and the buildings are just gonna fall off you could just be intensity six and we're all falling off plus we live in the pacific ring of fire so every year we have all these typhoons that sometimes it's not even that strong and sometimes it's not even an, a, a, a real typhoon but it's just a really strong monsoon but we all just these little things and the this you know it rains for 15 minutes and the whole city is flooded so the so you know i mean these things happen every year and yet we never think about disaster preparedness survival um, mentalities or what to do and we just like every year we panic so it's just a good thing that um this earthquake mania is, is something that's on our minds nowadays because even if this earthquake never comes which i hope it doesn't because we're all gonna anyway, i probably you'll never see my brilliant podcasts again because i'll probably be the first dead but i hope this doesn't come which it's possible like earthquakes sometimes you know all these models earthquake models that suggest like oh it's about to come but it takes like five more years right or whatever but with typhoons you know for sure there's gonna be 10 more this year and 20 more next year and every time you know when you got to evacuate you got it you at least you already have something packed for you know to grab right or a fire god no you're just living next to freaks and they just set a fire or stuff like that there are different kinds of disaster preparedness bags that you can pack so you've got your classic bug out bag where it just you grab your go bag and go. It's a 72 hour survival thing. And there's a kind of bag that you have to think you may never come home against your 
I may not ever come home again bag. Um, that should probably last you a little longer, perhaps five days. Don't try to overpack. It you may be very tempting to pack all the canned goods that all the bleach you want that you see like people suggesting you do. But if you think about it, if it's really, really heavy, who, who's gonna carry your stuff for you, your maids? Because they're gonna like leave you once cash is no longer king of the economy because times of the apocalypse and all. So anyway, my friend has this little hiking bag that it's actually works as a very it is a it's a go bag. There's no need to go out and buy a whole new set of gear. Just whatever you have. Just clean it out and this is like a classic hiking bag and or this, this is also another hiking bag. This has got enough space for you to live off on for 72 hours. And in case you think you may have to evacuate and never return home again, then you get a, you pack a bigger bag. These are very good bags that you could get in Green Hills for just three grand. I'm selling it for three grand, so and it's got a lot of Molly pouches. You could stick another Molly enabled bag here. Sorry, Molly compatible. And you could actually move this and make it into a fanny pack for those with big fannies. And um, you could, if you have any, it has these little straps for other Molly pouches, or you could like add parameters such as this. So, anyway, but the idea is not having a lot of gear, it's more thinking what are you packing this bag for? Or perhaps you foresee that you could be stuck at home and may not be able to leave. So you should also stock up and stuff for your house. Not, you know, don't keep thinking, oh, it has to be in a bag, because if it's just in your house, what are the things you need in your house that you may not necessarily be able to bring out? Or if you're someone lucky enough to have a vehicle, you should also pack a car survival kit. Almost every earthquake or whatever disaster list mentions a radio, well, at least here in the Philippines. Now, whether or not you want to pack this in your bug out bag is up to you. You could just get another multifunction tool, something smaller like a phone. Although, of course, you have to think, hey, my battery life is going to get run out. But lightness and uh, packing fewer things it makes sense if you're on the go. But if you're actually going to be camped out in your home in case of an earthquake or typhoon, whatever, it actually makes sense to have an actual dedicated radio just so you're not wasting the battery of your phone. This radio is actually pretty good. Got it at the supermarket for only 800 something pesos and it's got four bands, AM, FM, and two shortwave bands because once civilization breaks down and you know, your favorite DJs aren't on air anymore to talk to you about updates, you could actually get more random stations from farther out with these shortwave bands or your friendly neighborhood pirate radio. Oh, what's also pretty cool with this is that it comes with a USB port and an SD card slot for bumping to your favorite tunes. You could pop in your favorite Taylor Swift song so when you're camped out in the at night for the third day, you could... Oh wait, yeah, you could dance to it. Well, it comes with a little light up here. So the coolest thing is it's got a siren. <laughs> like a bag and a bunch of stuff. I'm sure you've know, seen like a bunch of things and all these lists like what to pack blah blah blah. So like I said this is just not gonna be a super comprehensive list and you don't have to follow everyone's crazy advice on like what to pack like bleach or you know god knows what. I mean really you're gonna carry it in your back or you're gonna yeah you know, I know a lot of people are thinking you know what I don't you know I got like two, three bags, I'm gonna overpack, I'm just gonna let the maid carry it or something. Let me tell you this, when shit hits the fan, when you're in an apocalypse type situation, when cash is no longer the preferred currency, yeah, they're gonna leave you. So don't like, have this mentality of I'm gonna rely on someone else. Do it yourself. Like if you have to pack something smaller, do it because can't pack like a huge ass bag, put everything with a kitchen sink there. And jewel, like a lot of people, they want to be, you know, all their like family heirlooms, like screw that, leave that home, right? Well, maybe bring a few so you could barter in the road, but that's that shouldn't be the focus of your, you know, priority. What should be on your mind? Let's see. The first thing is probably food. Now, I see a lot of people advising you to bring hand goods because they're not perishable. And they are right, they are. Well, they would perish in 10 years because of all the artificial preservatives, right? So, but. It's actually not a great idea to carry them in your bug out bag just because they're freaking heavy. Look at this stuff. This is not complete. This is just a bunch of stuff I want to talk to you guys about. I feel I feel that sometimes you may overlook it or just things that I feel that are important that you want to bring. Or So this isn't even a really packed 
bag of like, all the important crap and and yet it's really full yeah i would suggest for your bug out bag or the bag you're gonna leave in your car to bring just energy gels or energy bars or soda crackers they're pretty they're pretty lightweight and you get enough energy from them you get enough en enough nutrition these are great though for leaving your house in a situation where you could possibly be not able to leave because of a oh, well I've, luckily the last major earthquake i encountered was way back when i was a kid uh 96 or 92 here in manila but oh uh, back in 08 and 2012 we encountered floods 2012 uh, no sorry 2013 was from a monsoon 2208 was from a typhoon but both in both cases floods cost our house like my house to i couldn't leave i was trapped for four days so it was great to have canned goods, but you know what? Like pretty much every Filipino household is a bunch of these. This is canned beans. Canned beans are always good. So next, is, next up, I would talk about like, hygiene stuff. Now, it would be good to pack some toilet paper. And for women, it would be great to pack some, of course, like don't forget to pack sanitary napkins and stuff. Now, it would be very, very tempting to pack a lot of tampons just because they're really small. They take up much less space and a bunch of napkins but you have to remember in a like a bug out type situation when you're out and you don't know when you could get back home or if you could even get back home like let's say you're packing from a situation where you're never returning home again uh, god knows like outside like what when are you gonna go to the bathroom when will you be able to, sw to swap out your tampons i read a lot about these toxic shock syndrome type things nowadays where i don't know the idea like for survival like you just don't want to eliminate things that you cannot automate just things that you still have to 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 be concerned about just eliminate those fewer hassles so how about well food yeah it's good to have just a food container make a little meal out of it when you're out just to save space you could like put other stuff in there like utensils and a little cup of water oh yeah water is important lots of people suggest bringing like, uh, enough water for a week or maybe five days like or i don't know you could just like drink little sips right so they say like maybe three kilos of water but that's gonna be like such a huge bottle you're gonna put it in the bottom of your bag and for little little people i would suggest a small 30 liter bag like what i have or maybe maximum 45 liters because it's such a huge ass bag and you find it so hard to carry it's not it kind of defeats the purpose right so you, you gotta die because like you got all this shit in your back so better pack light and for me it would be better a couple of bottles like spread out in weight instead of like one huge bottle and this one you know it's easy to stick on the side like save space in the body of your bag plus you know like, let's say it's this in your back you could hold this and and it's 750 liters i don't know, just a thought who knows right if you have some brilliant idea on how to carry your water maybe you have a hydration bag or something which i don't because i don't want to buy special gear just for this right Things to tie stuff with or bind stuff with. It's always handy to have tape, some pins, possible cable ties are always handy. Anyway, shock cords, bungee cords are always, never have enough of them. They're really cheap and handy. Clothing, uh, some people suggest, in general, like I mentioned earlier, nobody really thinks about survival or preparing. Even though the Philippines is the Pacific Ring of Fire where we have typhoons and earthquakes all the damn time. Except now that they found this like huge ass fault, the city that would could possibly lead to like, an Armageddon type situation and earthquake model they ran that could possibly mean a huge a huge one landing in the Philippines very soon. We don't know when. Now that everyone's very aware of these things, people, like people have been forwarding these pictures, these guidelines, and they're all great, but you have to think also like what's best for you, right? So it was just, it was just what I always say. It really, it's your situation. Are you going to be able to carry it? Are you, what is your goal? Is it bug out or like never, never coming back or what? So I would suggest like for a bug out bag to limit your clothing to three days instead of five full days. I mean, it's going to be gross, but you may have to reuse your underwear, you know, that kind of stuff. And the good thing with us is that we live in a tropical country. At least, you know, we could forget all about thick, bulky clothes and we could wear a t-shirt. So that's good. It saves space. Plus, you leave stuff in, space in your bag for other kind of stuff. One thing I would suggest you pack, though, is a very, very lightweight rain jacket. That way you don't have to pack an umbrella. It's very, very lightweight, very small. It folds up really compact. And you could just stuff in your bag. See, it folds up really small. And a small hat is always handy, so...
hats. Oh yeah, and gloves. A little bandana type thing, you know, for to protect yourself from the tropical sun or whatever, tourniquet, whatever. And then uh, a belt. This is a paracord belt. Make sure you buy like, a real paracord belt. So if you really need to, you could unwind this belt to tie stuff. So yeah, I guess you should should we consider this under clothing or under binding, tying stuff like with the tape and the cable ties. You could have a little paracord bracelet too. Twine. This is kitchen twine. It's good to have a little box for your valuables. Like I said, like leave most of your family jewelry. You don't really don't don't sweat it. Bring if you really want to bring a few for barter. But it would be good to have like a little hard case for like, real valuable stuff. Like for example, if you're like, a nearsighted person like me, I'm wearing my contacts now. You should like, have a spare pair of glasses or two and keep them like, a hard case. Uh, you don't want to end up like Piggy and Lord of the Flies, right? So don't expect to be just randomly looking up stuff when the time comes. Like, how do I, I don't know, perform first aid or something? What is the phone number of this? of the cops but do not expect to look really don't look to the cops just for important numbers that you or important information print it out put it in your bag put it in a little plastic sleeve or your like little plastic box don't be expecting in to just look stuff up randomly online it's like if you're gonna expect to be checking out google maps time comes you know better just print out a little map bring a little compass phone is handy in fact you know what you don't want to be wasting your battery and like, on 3G and internet at the time. So basic phone phone calls and texts. And it'd be good to have a power bank right? handy, I mean, like with you. But it's really great. You, instead of having a little charger that plugs to the wall, it plugs here, it plugs to your phone, and it charges it. But of course, like after three charges, it's dead. So you really gotta be very, very thrifty up until you land in a safe place or well, when the world ends, then anyway, and then anyway, so. Oh, I forgot to mention this. It would be good, like hand sanitizer. Just as it's very important to have stuff to tie stuff with, it's also very important to render things asunder when it's necessary. So, it's this is a fixed blade knife. I normally don't really carry this around, but it is it'll, it'll be handy for your bug out bag. This edge also could be used, and also the serrated edge. So this is a very good tool knife and. I'm not saying you should do this, but you may need to hunt little animals. And if we're talking about Manila, right? We're not talking about the woods somewhere where you're gonna hunt some rabbit and make some stew. I mean, it, you may have to hunt straight cats and dogs. I'm not saying this is something I advocate. I probably wouldn't be able to do it, but I mean, there's like this kind of philosophy that says more, more morals are absolute. Like no matter what, like if if it's like you're starving already, it's still immoral to steal a loaf of bread. Uh, but there's a type of morality that says, well, it depends on what's happening on the ground, right? I, I really, I mean, I don't even know why I'm talking about like killing cats, but don't, okay, just, okay, you know what? This is just for cutting bread that you may steal. I mean, you know, see, this is the type of thing. Now, if you talk about what is acceptable during times of a crisis, do you do a rationalized looting? Because there is, a, there will, that is something I'm talking about. Next is looting that will happen. When the huge typhoon hit here two years ago, the it wasn't that bad in my uh, my part of town, but in the islands, um, it was really bad down in the central part of the country. And we got all these looters, people shooting up stuff. By the way, if you have a gun, I would suggest yeah you could bring it, but it's really heavy unless you have a car. I mean, unless you really know how to use it, I would suggest not bringing it with you. You could. But if you're like holed up in your house, waiting to be rescued, or just waiting, waiting to be rescued, basically waiting for the water to go down if it's a typhoon or a flood, or waiting for just people to not be going crazy out there if it's an earthquake, then yeah, okay, you can have your gun like to defend yourself from looters. But if you're just going out, unless you really know how to operate it, I, I would suggest just to save the weight and leave it home. So yeah, that's it for the butterfly knife. Be very careful with it. And this is a multi-tool it's a very cheap multi-tool tool that i got in the japanese store for 88 pesos you have your basic corkscrew for your vino screwdriver ah, it's a it's a multi-tool you know what it looks like i also have a technical knife this is part of my you could normally carry this around with you or well, it would be helpful to have a small handy knife with you all the time this is a tack force speedster 
model and um, I got it from Amazon for only ten dollars it's very good quality it's got an assisted opening blade so it's very easy to open and it even has like a can opener for your brewskis in case your vino isn't enough for you so yeah it's lightweight enough for everyday carry in your purse or it's got a little clip for your belt if last but not the least oh uh, yeah trash bags for the bodies just kidding um for your trash oh yeah and i have this box this is like my standard first kit in my room just keep a few of these like standard staples in your bag now it's up to you what it's comprised of of course like for people with chronic with chronic conditions that require medication then you have to have um, enough dosages of do those and regular people it would be good to have antibiotics or you know, painkillers paracetamol, ibuprofen, aspirin, and it's up to you. Water purification tablets, I don't have them right now actually, but it, it would be good to have like, you know, standard bandage, gauze, tape, scissors. What else do I have? Yeah, the gauze is here. What is this? So, oh yeah, it's some kind of a first aid kit. See, this is what I'm talking about. No rely on like having some info in your phone like this, that thing happened. What am I going to do? Oh, I'm going to Google it. Oh, you know. There's no internet. Or if there's internet, you just waste 10 bars of your phone. I mean, sorry, like, of your phone's bad. It'd be handy to have cash, small denominations maybe. It's good to have some big bills too, just in case you gotta hightail it out of the country. Your passport. A lot of people advocate carrying a lot of your important documents in your bug out bag, but think about it. If you're carrying your birth certificate and your marriage certificate and a bunch of other stuff, you mean leave it in your bug out bag in your closet all the time, is that where you're gonna permanently file it in your home? Because that's not very organized and logical. What I would do is I would scan those and, you know, well, you know, you could put them in the cloud, right? But yes, I know internet might be dead. So you could save like local copies of that in your phone and you could make paper photocopies of it. Put it in your bag and just keep the originals where you normally file them. I mean, if you really think about it, like a true disaster, nobody's going to ask like, you know what, this is not original. Well, actually, being the bureaucratic place this is, they might be. But you know, everyone around you will also have tattered originals. That are, you know, you might as well make multiple photocopies instead of like, carrying your original around because then, you know, what about the 99% of the time that it's not a disaster? What every time you're gonna need like some files, you're gonna reach into your that bug out bag and mess with it? Or maybe if you don't want to keep this in your bag all the time at least keep it in a handy place where you can each easily grab it and go which is your passport because well when shit hits the fan you may have to hightail it out of town right planes may not even fly anymore right you know the airport may ground all flights a mirror would be good as a signaling device no this is not for checking your makeup oh yeah lastly it would be good to have a timepiece yes when it actually becomes a post-apocalyptic universe time will cease to lose its meaning and people will no longer be so bound by time of 501 and 502 things like that but before that time happens you do have to keep time you have to keep time if you're doing some procedure it's got a timer a stopwatch and these are things that are very handy if you notice that oh some person some buddy of yours went hunting foraging for food and he wasn't back for a while the most important thing for a survival mentality isn't all the crap you buy at a hardware store just because suddenly the government is telling you you know what you gotta watch out like earthquakes you know you now you have to be prepared for disasters the most important thing is to be flexible and just not not a panic things like that it's really all mental good luck